from coast to coast in every state in the Union, the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! That's me, Groucho Marx! again with $1,500 for one of our couples tonight, George. Who's first to try for it? A couple of newlyweds, Groucho, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they come now. Come on in, folks. Welcome, welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word while we're talking, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. This oh. is Mr. and Mrs. Robert Holtzhauer, right? Right. Right. Meet Groucho Marx, folks. Hello. Hey, glad to know you, sir. Glad to know you. And, uh... You're Robert, you're, you're an early one, eh? That's right, sir. We are. What is this going on here? <laughs> Benjamin sticks his nose in everything, eh? Don't you wish you could see it? Yeah, I guess I do. I don't know. Hardly know. <laughs> and your name is Arlene? That's right. You're an early one, too, huh? Oh, yes. You're a very pretty girl, you know that? Thank you. Did you know that? Oh, I've heard it, to be honest. <laughs> You don't have to be honest with me, you know. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't propose to be honest with you. You know this fellow here? Yes, that's my husband, Bob. Answer my question. Do you know him? <laughs> how, old, how old are you, Arlene? 22. And uh, how old are you, Bob? I'm 27. What do you do for a living? I go to college. That's the way you make a living? <laughs> you mean you're on the football team? <laughs> Are, are you working, Arlene? No, I go to college, too. Oh, you mean you're both on the team, eh? <laughs> what are you taking in college besides Bob? Uh, uh... I'm taking a major in medicine. You're taking a major in, in medicine, eh? Is your husband aware of this? <laughs> no, I mean a major, like a... <laughs> are you taking him for everything he's got, or just... Uh... <laughs> No, it's the line of study you pursue in order to get your degree. You pursue the major. <laughs> Who are you taking in college, Bob? A lieutenant in the wax? <laughs> no, I, I'm studying law. Oh, well, I don't blame you. She's going to carry on with the first major. <laughs> At least you'll be able to sue the guy. <laughs> Let me hear you talk like a lawyer. I mean, give me some shyster talk. <laughs> We don't talk shyster, right? I can give you some, uh... You don't talk shyster talk, eh? No, we don't talk. You don't get any of my business, eh? We have terms such as habeas corpus and nola contender. Nola contender. Uh, knew her well, eh? No, no. No, no A little Spanish girl. I wonder, I wonder where she is tonight. No, nola contender actually means that there's... What does it mean? It means there's no... No fight, there's no contest. That's Nola, all right. <laughs> no fight in Nola, she'd go to any movie I suggested. Huh? <laughs> what advantages are there in being married while you're both still in college? Well, for one thing, you, you settle down, you develop a mature approach, and you learn to work together, that's the main thing. In what way? Well, we can help each other with the dishes, and then around exam time, we usually brief each other for exams. I don't see how exchanging briefs can help you. <laughs> Unless you wear the same size. <laughs> now, as soon as you finish school, uh, Bob, are you uh, planning on hanging up your shingle immediately? Well, I'd like to, but I have to pass the bar. Well, that's a good place to get shingled. <laughs> Suppose you were called to defend uh, Arlene in court. Go ahead, let's see you defend her. I'd have to know what she was charged with. Well, uh, I wouldn't know that, eh? <laughs> Maybe brown celery tonic. Bro. <laughs> How long did you say you've been married? We've been married now about a month. Would you say that uh, Bob is a perfect husband, Arlene? Well, yes, he is. 
Suppose he told you he had to stay after school some night, and the next day your best friend told you she saw him dancing to Charleston with her. A dazzling redhead at Ciro's. What would you say to that? I'd say that couldn't be my husband. Why not? He's a man, isn't he? <laughs> yes, but he doesn't dance to Charleston. <laughs> Well, he's more of a man than I thought he was. <laughs> well, um, Arlene, I predict your marriage will be a howling success, especially if you ever catch him doing the Charleston with a redhead. <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're gonna play your bet your life for a chance at $1,500. Right now, I want you to pay close attention to Fenneman. <clears throat> Take this out and have it cleaned, huh? Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,500. Fenneman, explain the rules. All right, each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question at the end of the show. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected nicknames of states as your category. 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 <laughs> That's an Indiana category. <laughs> Where they make all that steel. Here's your first question. Uh, how much will you bet of the 20 how much you want? I don't know. <laughs> Talk right up, kids. $10, I guess. Because okay. throughout the United States, there's over 400 people listening to this. <laughs> Let's see if I still got the same sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> I take no chances. Sometimes they switch right in the middle of a show. <laughs> I had one move out once just as I was welcoming him to the first show. <laughs> They're tricky, you know. They're slippery as all get out. Huh? How much did you say you were betting here? Um, you know $10. you've gotten prettier since I looked at you last night. Thank you. How much are you going to bet? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. And I talk right up now. All right. Uh, what state is known as the sunflower state? Kansas. Kansas is right. And you kids are on the way. I have thirty dollars. All right. Remember, you're going for fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, how much of the thirty will you try? 20? Let's try. Talk it up, oh, kids. 25. Okay. 25. What state is known as the Empire State? New York. New York is right. They're climbing too. They have $55. All right, you're climbing. You got $55. Here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? Here they come. They're on the inside now. They're coming out. That's another game, isn't it? How much are you going to bet? Eh? 50. 50 you going to bet? Mm -hmm. Have they got that much? Yes, $55 they have. Oh, land sakes alive. <laughs> What state is known as the Hoosier State? Indiana. Indiana! And now they have $105. You have zoomed to the pinnacle of success, so you've got $105. So how much are you going to bet? We'll bet 100 This girl must be Ooh. a German extraction. She left the pinnacle of ex... How much are you betting? $100. $100? Hey, you're mm -hmm. really gamblers, huh? <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm more nervous than they are. <laughs> I'll bet you are. Just a minute, man. <laughs> what state is known as the Buckeye State? Ohio. Ohio! And they wind up with a grand total of $205. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't you kids go too far away because you may get a chance at the big question later on in the show. Thank you very much. Gotcha, our next couple has been off stage, they have. so they don't know the secret word is door. They will say while they're out here talking to you. We invited some florists to the program tonight, and just before some we went florists? on... Florists? No, florists. Oh, florists. I Fellas... said florists. Yeah, I wonder how we're going to get some trees in here. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the studio audience selected of these florists that we invited into the show, Mr. Jack Dortonak. His partner is a housewife from the studio audience, Mrs. Mary Fraterni. Come on in here, folks, and meet Groucho Marx, right over here. Welcome, kiddies, to your bet your life. And if you say the secret word, you'll spread $100 between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Jack uh, Dortonac, huh? What kind of a name is that, Dortonac? Well, that's French. Oh, it is, huh? That's French. How, you, how would you pronounce it over there? In France, yeah. uh, Dortignac. Dortignac, huh? Well, Dortignac yourself, huh? <laughs> and Mrs. Mary Fatanic, huh? That's right. Do you mind if I call you Mary? Oh, no, you can call me anything. <laughs> okay, well, tell me, Sam, where are you from? Huh? 
Me, I'm born and raised in Norfolk, Virginia. Well, why did you come out here, Mary? Well, I'll tell you, it's a long story, but I'll make it short. My husband... See that you do, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> My husband worked for 19 years in a fruit market and at least a spy, so his brother-in-law took him here and offered him that he was going to do this and do that, and he didn't do anything for him. So he's working out... He was going to what? He was going to do this and do that for him, and he didn't do anything for him. He's kind of wealthy, you know, but talk is cheap. He didn't do anything for him. Just a bum, huh? <laughs> Does your husband ever bring you flowers, Mary? Oh, no, I'm allergic to flowers. I sneeze. I can't stand flowers. <laughs> now, what about the flowers on your hat if you're allergic to flowers? Well, he's a phony. Don't pay no attention to these. <laughs> Jack, let's talk about the flower business. Where, where is your shop? Must uh, be on the main stem, I imagine. 9526 Santa Monica Boulevard. It isn't on the main stem, man. Eh? No, no, not on the main stem. Where Be is it? Beverly Hills, 9526 Santa Monica Boulevard. Oh, that's uh, right up in my neighborhood. How, Chris, is the how is the flower business? Picking up. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I was hoping, uh, hoping you'd say business was bad so I could say the flower business has gone to pot. <laughs> I didn't do much better with that than I did with the main stem. <laughs> Now, let's try it once more. How is the flower business? Well, it could be better. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear your business is going to pot. <laughs> now, isn't that better than cheating me out of a joke, huh? <laughs> you want to try main stem again now and see what we can do with that? Seriously, now, how is the flower business? Picking up. <laughs> going to go through that again. <laughs> How do you keep your flowers fresh? Suppose it's a hot day, what do you do? Keep them in the icebox. Don't any of the more fragile types ever freeze? No. Why, why not? Because there isn't any ice in the icebox. <laughs> well, that makes sense. I'm having a nice evening here. Now, what is this, uh, what is this nonsense about an icebox? Well, it really isn't an icebox. Well, why do you call it a nice well, box? It looks like one, that's all. So does my Aunt Minnie, but we don't call her a nice box. <laughs> what do you charge for your flowers? Oh, anywhere from 10 cents a bunch to $35 a dozen. $35? What, uh, what kind of flowers are those? Oh, it's a red lily-shaped flower that look, it looks like a lily, only it's flat. Call I think it's nice for two people to occasionally frighten each other. <laughs> what was that, uh, Jack? Uh, you caught me, eh? They're anthurium. Uh, I was so engrossed in Sam here, I forgot what you were saying. <laughs> what are the name of these flowers? Anthurium. Anthurium? Anthurium. They're a... Uh, what, what, what? Uh, a lily-shaped huh? lily flower, red, only they're flat. It's flat, eh? And so is the customer after he pays for it, eh? <laughs> What's the most popular flower? Roses. Well, why, why is that, Jack? Well, I guess because red roses denote love and yellow roses, jealousy, white roses, purity. Let's see. Did, did you know roses were green? I've never seen any green ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, I happen to know that roses are green. I see them hanging on our line every Monday. <laughs> You know, it's comforting to have Mary on the show. She laughs before every joke. <laughs> now, Jack, some people raise flowers for a hobby. I've often wondered, what does a florist have for a hobby? Oh, I don't know. Mine is playing tennis. Playing tennis, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a hobby, uh, Mary? Oh, yes. Uh, what is it, huh? Well, I tell you, I've been playing a piano by ear since I'm a knee high and a Have you tried it with your hands? <laughs> well, I can hear any piece and just play it by ear, you know. Really? Yeah. See? But anyhow, I can really play a piano. You're musically inclined. And I love to sing. You, what kind of songs do you sing? Oh, I love blues, like Sophie Tucker, you know, that, uh... Somebody's day. 
Some of these days? Do you know some of these days? Well, I, uh, I wish you had a piano. I sure love to play it, but I can sing. Okay, can you sing it without a, without a piano? Well, I'll see what I can do, but I really love to play it when I sing well, it. sounds so... Unfortunately, we don't have a piano here, but you just tear loose, Maria. You can get one for a dollar down, dollar when you get... <laughs> You want me to sing it? Yes, I certainly do. But I want you to sing uh, some of these days. Why some of these days? Why are you gonna miss me, honey? Some of these days. You know you're gonna feel so lonely. You know we had a piano here. Would have left by this time. Anything with four legs would have walked out. show you that two can sing as bad as one. Huh? Yeah, that was beautiful, Mary. From now on, that'll be our song. <laughs> and Florist, I have only one thing to say to you. Please omit flowers, will you, while we're singing? Now, let's see how well you two make out in the battle for the $1,500. You've got to work together as a team and run your $20 into more than our other couples. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. The newlyweds won $205. I'd say let's play the game, shall we? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. <laughs> let's see how high you can build you $20. You select the sections of cities of the world. Is that right? Now, you have $20. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Talk up, kids. How much? Five. Five dollars. All right. And what city do you find the Back Bay region? Back Bay region. Boston? Boston is right. And they're on the way. They have $25. Remember, you're going for $1,500. Now, how much of the 25 will you try? Five. Oh, no. Ten. Yeah. Ten dollars. Fifteen. Ten dollars? Uh, make, make, make a decision Let's between Make it 15. You know. Fifteen. Fifteen, okay. In what city do you find the left bank? Memphis. One answer now. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it's Paris. You should have known that. Oh. It's a pretty easy question. Yeah? They now have $10, Groucho. All right, now you're down to how much? $10. $10. Here's your third question. How much will you bet of the 10 $5. $5. In what city do you find the Bowery? New York. New York is right. All right, they have $15 now. I answered that quick before Mary got in. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 15 will you try? No, then you'll be out of luck. <laughs> Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Is that all right with you, Jack? Is that's it all right. right. I don't know. You're good natured. Do you want it, Dee Tom? Oh, sure. That's all right. <laughs> now, in what city do you find Knob Hill? San Francisco. San Francisco. Oh. And the grand total is twenty-five dollars. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Benjamin. Now we'll soon know who's going to get the chance at the big question, because you see, at this point. The um, newlyweds are leading with $205. Oh, my dear, they must be smart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the secret word is still door, and our other contestants, of course, have been off stage, so they don't know what it is. You can bring them in now, fellas, please. We invited some veterans of the Spanish-American War to the show tonight, and also some American Army draftees of this war. Um, I'd like you now, Groucho, to meet Clyde Black and Roosevelt Gray. Come on in here, fellas, and meet Groucho Marx, please. Uh, welcome, kids, to your bet your life. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Uh, Spanish-American War vet, uh, Clyde Black, huh? And a drafty. You're the drafty. Huh? Yes, sir. Clyde Black, uh, aren't you uh, pretty old to be drafted? Uh? I was in Spanish-American Spanish War. Oh. 
Um, which side were you on? <laughs> Both sides. Both sides, huh? Yeah? Well, that's safe anyhow, eh? Uh, when was that? 1898. It was 52 years ago. How, how old are you now? 72. 72. Well, you're a fine-looking man. <laughs> if I didn't know that you'd been in the Spanish-American War, I'd take you for about 60. Thank you for the compliment. It's no compliment. I'm telling you the truth. You know. <laughs> Roosevelt Gray, huh? How, how long have you been in the Army? Two months. Four, four months? Have you written your memoirs yet? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Do you have any particular problems in the Army, Roosevelt? Well, not so particular, but I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> well, you haven't got anything on the rest of us, huh? <laughs> when you make up your mind, be sure to tell the general, Roosevelt. Huh? <laughs> right. What do you mean you don't know where you're going? Well, I don't know whether I'm going in the infantry, or course of engineer, or tanks, or airplanes, or what. I see. Well, here's an old soldier. Perhaps you can profit by his experience. What branch do you suggest, Clyde? Uh, cavalry. Isn't it pretty tough to get on the cavalry now? They're not even taking horses, are they? <laughs> not even draft horses, huh? <laughs> They're not even drafting draft horses. <laughs> what, what made you decide to enter the army, Roosevelt? Well, the draft board. <laughs> Come now, Roosevelt, it's not that easy. You, you must know somebody on the draft. <laughs> what is your rank in the Army, uh, Roosevelt? Private. Well, what is, uh, what is your ambition? What would you like to be? A civilian. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we're all full up, eh? <laughs> But leave your name at the front office, and if anything turns up, I, uh, we'll give you a ring, eh? What was your rank in the Army, Clyde? Book private. How long was your training period? Seven months. And how long is your basic training? Uh, fourteen weeks. Fourteen weeks, eh? You mean the boys today accomplish in fourteen weeks what it took uh, Clyde seven months to do? Well, I Why guess, is that? I guess because the Army is more streamlined than it was then. Are you referring to the wax? <laughs> Listen to the wax. How were the wax in your day, uh, Clyde? No wax. No wax, huh? How oh, come? Because no woman was allowed in 40 miles of army camp. <laughs> That's why your training always took a year, I guess. <laughs> the soldiers were always on maneuvers 40 miles from the camp. Now <laughs> ah, then, you're going to play your bet your life. You have to beat our other two couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,500. That's the DeSoto Plymouth big question. I can't tell you how much our other couples won, but Phantom and his offstage remind our listeners. The newlyweds are still ahead with $205. All right, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected questions on Abraham Lincoln as your category. Now, here's your first question. How much will you bet? Well, you're a partner in this, an equal partner, you know. Well, I'll agree $10. $10, okay. What was the name of the battlefield where Lincoln made his famous address? Gettysburg. Gettysburg is right. And off we get started. We now have thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for fifteen hundred dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty will you try? Fifteen. All right, 15. Roosevelt. Okay. What was the name of the man who assassinated Lincoln? Uh, Booth. Booth is right. And climbing now, we have forty-five dollars. All right, you got forty-five dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the forty-five will you bet? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. What was the name of Lincoln's wife? Nancy Hanks. One answer between you now. Come to some uh, definite conclusion. Her maiden name was Nancy Hanks. Nancy Lincoln. No, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. It's, it's Mary Todd Lincoln. Oh, I thought Nancy mother. Hanks I think I didn't know. Oh, we didn't hear that. Well, that's a shame. They've dropped to $20 now, Groucho. Well, you're still on the run. You got $20. Uh, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 20 will you go for? 15. 15? 15. Okay, Clyde. Okay. All right, Lincoln first gained national prominence as a senatorial candidate from what state? Illinois. Illinois. Illinois is correct. <laughs> wind up with $35. And that means the newlyweds with $205 get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. <laughs> and here comes the winning couple, the newlyweds, all ready for their chance at the $1,500 question, Groucho. 
All right, here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully, and please, no help in the audience. Here it is. Ready? History books aren't always accurate. Remember that and tell me, on what hill was the Battle of Bunker Hill actually fought? Talk it over. Talk it over. Take your time. And even if you don't know, guess. Well, high hill. Bunker Hill. No, no, I'm sorry. It was, it was Breed's Hill in Boston. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $210 in the quiz. $205. $205 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. Be sure to tune in next week at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show. You bet your life. Friends, go in to see a DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you.